All right, today's tutorial we're going to talk about the Cisco E2000 uh, small office home office uh, home wireless router. Um, looks similar to this. You can purchase it at any stores uh, that sell computer electronics such as Best Buy or Staples or Target or uh, any major uh, value chain store. So you can see here the internet connection is this yellow uh, labeled RJ45 jack. This is where you would plug in your cable modem for your internet facing address and for your local connection for a PC directly connected what you'll need to do uh, for the initial setup you plug into port 1. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in and I will set you through the management interface. So once you've plugged in your uh, Cisco E2000, you want to plug in um, a standard Ethernet jack and cable into port 1 of the Cisco E2000. Take the other end and plug it into your LAN cable on the back of your computer. This is required for the setup of this wireless router. Once you've plugged in all the different connections, you want to open up the Internet Explorer and browse to 192.168.1.1. This is the default management interface. When you hit enter, it'll ask for your credentials. The username is blank by default, and the password is all lowercase, and the word is admin. Hit OK. And this brings you to the Cisco wireless router configuration screen. This is where you can set up wireless profiles, um, set encryption, uh, look at status, see who's connected, etc. So we're going to focus on setting up WPA2 with AES for your wireless encryption. So you can click on wireless. By default it's set to Wi-Fi protected setup. We want to change this to manual. The wireless band uh, 2.4 should suffice. It gives you uh, a longer range of which you can take your device. Uh, the 5 gigahertz spectrum um, gives you uh, somewhat of a more reliable connection, but can't uh, spread as far as a distance as a 2.4. Um, for network mode, you can choose mixed, meaning it'll support uh, BG and N uh, wireless connectivity network name or SSID, this is um, what you'll see if you scan for a wireless network um, at your house. So you can name it appropriate. Um, some people like to use their last name or or their you know favorite pet or w whatever the case may be. It, it doesn't matter what you name it, but you'll want to name it something unique. So I will name this SSIDs are case sensitive. So if you use a capital letter on one end or anywhere in the SSID, when you try to connect with the client, you'll also need to make sure that uh, you type that in appropriately if uh, necessary. Channel width, um, you could set this to auto. And channel, you can set to auto. This is, um, channels are used for handling communication if there's multiple wireless devices in your home and it'll automatically choose the least congested channel to ensure that you have good uh, strong connectivity and the SSID broadcast means that anyone um, within range of your wireless network if they're doing a scan to see what's out there with this option enabled anyone can see your SSID called home wireless and attempt to connect if there is no security or if there is security it'll present them with the opportunity to enter a passphrase and that's a personal preference. If it's enabled, it makes it a little bit easier to connect, so I'll leave it enabled for now. Let's click Save Settings and click Continue. It brings you right back to the page, so let's go to Wireless Security. In this case, we'll want to choose WPA2 Personal. 
The passphrase is the password you're going to use to connect to the wireless SSID that we've created in the other page. Generally, you should do a passphrase a minimum of 12 characters uh, for best security, and it shouldn't be anything that can be easily attempted. Otherwise, uh, people from the outside or hackers or whatever the case may be may try to connect to your network and use what's called a brute force dictionary attack, where it uses common words and phrases to try to connect to your wireless network. So generally, you'll want to make it some random string of uh, text and numeric and special characters, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just make it uh, something simple. We'll call it uh, test12345. You'll click Save Settings. Click Continue. And now it's set up. So now on your laptop or wireless device, can uh, take a look at that. So um, if you're working for the hospital you probably have the Odyssey Access client on your computer. To open it you'll see this icon of a blue ship. Um, sometimes it's not blue, it may be black depending on uh, where you're at. If you're on site at the hospital it should be blue. If you're at home sometimes it's black. In any case you can right click on that blue ship click Odyssey Access Client Manager, it'll bring up this screen right here. <clears throat> so the first thing you're going to want to do is 